just set up camp for the first night. Um, I'm at a place called Roca Calascio, um, which is like if there wasn't any mist, um, there's like a castle, like ruins of an ancient castle. I'm not too sure of the history behind it, but it's super beautiful. When we rode in, actually, you might have seen it in previous shots as we rode into this place, but I'll get more shots tomorrow morning. Um, so yeah, we've set up camp here, um, and I, I've tagged along with two German guys. Um, they're super nice. I met them like five k's into the trip, and they're doing the same the same uh, trail as me, although they're doing the full thing. But um, yeah, figured we'd, I'd tag along for a few days, and. Um, Right now they've just, they brought a drone, so they flew it off this cliff to get some shots earlier when, when, when there was no mist, and I think either the drone lost, lost power or something happened and it just started descending into the distance, so they've gone with a flashlight to try and find it, which seems like an impossible task, and I don't know if you can see here, it's super like steep, I mean you can walk down there, but it's just a bit of a... Uh, bit of an adventure, I'd assume. Um, so yeah, so bikes are here, tent, and yeah, the ride today was really good. It was 30 k's in total. Um, a fair bit of pushing, so there was some unrideable surfaces, and um, like this last part here, I'll just show you. This is the type of terrain that we had to push. So it's really like loose rocks, big loose rocks, and not to mention it was uphill, so had to push. Um, yeah, other than that, I'm super keen for the first night of camping, and see how it goes. The next shot will probably be in the morning, so yeah, see how it goes. Good morning, just woke up. First night of camping was pretty good. Um, I didn't have great, like great sleep. Um, I was probably in the tent for like almost 12 hours from like 8 p.m. till, um, what's about 7.30 a.m. now. So I was lying down for almost 12 hours, which was good for rest, um, and like recovery from the bike ride, but I probably, I don't know, it felt like I got maybe six to seven hours of sleep. That's what it felt like anyway. Um... Excuse the lack of energy at the moment. Like I said, I just woke up and the sun hasn't come up above the uh, horizon yet, so it's still pretty cold and um, it's still a really nice view. But yeah, can't wait for the sun to come up because actually there it'll come up there. I think um, everything's pretty wet, like all, all the outside of all our tents and the you know the bikes and our bags are super wet, so it'd be good to dry them off. So, yeah, looking forward to another day of riding. Um, we'll start off with some breakfast. And uh, around the corner, there's a little village, so probably get a hot drink there, like a coffee or a tea, to start the day off right. Um, but yeah. Just as I stopped that last video, the sun started to rise above the mountains, so... All of a sudden, in like five seconds, it's just gotten like a few degrees warmer. Morale's lifted a bit. <laughs> and the castle looks pretty nice as well.
Well, we just hit the jackpot. We've had a brutal day of riding. And the, <laughs> the sun's about to go down. And uh, we're worried we won't be able to find a place to sleep. We were considering staying at some random place like five minutes ago with a bunch of noisy cows, but we decided to keep going and we found this just ideal camping spot with fireplace, a running water thing, tap, and flat grass. Oh, it's perfect. So we just had our second night. Um, I slept a lot better last night than the night before. I think because we had such a challenging day yesterday. As soon as I got into my tent, I just crashed. Um, so yeah, basically a summary of, of the ride yesterday. Um, it was pretty challenging. And I think mainly it's because of we had uh, expectations that the ride would be easy, like downhill, paved. So we sort of set our expectations at that level and what what it was in reality was a lot of a lot of pushing uphill well it seemed like a lot of uphill but basically I guess there was a it mostly was downhill but it was off road so when there was just the slightest bit of incline we couldn't ride up it because it was so like the rocks were so chunky or the ground was you know muddy or for whatever reason, we were just pushing whenever we got a little bit of uphill and we barely had any paved roads. So it felt like the majority of the ride was uphill. Even though if you look on the map, it, it looks like it's just a plateau downhill, plateau downhill. Um, and uh, I, I was lucky I had my front suspension on my bike, but those uh, the other two guys had proper gravel bikes with no suspension, so they were they were struggling. Um, a bit more than me. Um, then we, we caught a nice break in the middle of the ride, maybe about one or two o'clock. We came across a spot where we were going to sit for lunch, just eat our, you know, baked beans and muesli bars. And then I spotted on the map a, a restaurant close by. And that was surprising because we we're in the middle of nowhere. We weren't near a city or even a little village. So we, we rode there and it was perfect. It was like a little, I don't know, it reminded me of something you'd find in, in the United States. You bought your own meat and you cooked it on the grills that they had out the back and it was delicious. Had some bread, some cheese, um, fueled us up for the rest of the day well. So then we continued on and sure enough, we changed from paved roads to off-road again and we were hoping every corner that we turned, oh, it would turn paved, it would become a road. And eventually we did see a big wide paddock and one side of the paddock had a start of a paved road and we were getting all excited. And then we realized we had to turn right instead of left. So we had to continue on the, the grass. Um, then it was, hang on, I'll get the sun out of shot. Um, then it was starting to get pretty late. We were worried that the uh, sun would go down soon. So we were struggling to find a place to camp and uh, we were considering stopping somewhere just like five minutes before we got to this spot. But it was like in front of a barn that someone probably owned and they might not like us to camp there. And there were a bunch of cows with cowbells on that were just so noisy. Um, so we debated whether to stay there or to continue on through the forest. And, um, we decided to continue on through the forest and yeah, not even a hundred meters down, we found this open plain and we were so lucky because it had, you know, water and a bench and a fire and um, yeah, we got very lucky. So now the plan for today is dry all our stuff out because everything was super wet this morning. Um, and then these guys will continue on the path, the, uh, the proper trail. I will stick with them for probably like an hour and then I'm just going to hit the main road and make a beeline for uh, a, a town called Sulmona, Sulmona, 
which is where I'll hop on a, a bus or a coach that goes straight to Napoli. Um, so yeah, as soon as I get somewhere with reception, I'll buy a ticket and uh, yeah. Well, I just parted ways with Jakob and Tim, uh, the two German guys I met. Um, they're going to continue on the rest of the trail, whereas I'm veering off now onto more main-ish roads to uh, beeline for Solmona, where I'm catching a bus to Napoli. So uh, I think I won't film. I don't think I'll film from here from now until then, just because of two reasons. Um, it's 40 k's away. And I've got to be there before or within four hours. I think I'll make it, um, but that's just, you know, I want to make the most of every minute I've got just in case I get a flat tire or uh, something goes wrong. I go off the wrong road or whatever. But um, that and also it probably won't be that interesting of a of footage. It'll just be road. So, so yeah, um, I'll talk more about the, the last two days when I'm at the bus, where I'm, when I'm on the bus. Um, so yeah, see you at the bus stop. Okay, I know this is quite ironic, but this is the reason why I'm not going to film the rest of the trip. Um, it's because when I expected road, I get single trail, uh, very steep single trail decline. <laughs> so, okay, I promise this is the last video until the bus stop. Alright, <laughs> well I made it to the bus station, and um, that's a bit of a story in itself, so I didn't think I'd make it. Um, so my bus left, uh, is scheduled to leave this station at 3.30 p.m. It was 11.30 a.m. when I split off with, um, Jakob and Tim. So I had four hours and it said, initially it said it was 15 k's away, which I think was going by just the, the highway. So I wasn't sweating it at all. Um, split off with those guys and then I looked again and it said 40 k's. I thought, oh, well, that's a bit, you know, I thought that's more than double what I thought, but that's all right. 40 k's, just taking the road. In four hours, I should be fine. And I had enough water and food. Um, that was, wasn't an issue. And it's crazy. The things I said in the one of the last few clips about, you know, giving myself time just in case I get a flat tire or if I go off the wrong road, both of those things happened and put put me way behind schedule. So first, f firstly, I went on that off-road single trail gravel thing for like 8Ks, which was so long, took up so much time, and it got so steep, unrideable. And at one point, I swear I heard <laughs> a bear. I thought it was a bear. Maybe I was just hearing things, but I was in the middle of nowhere and I heard what sounded like a large animal. But whatever, got down to the bottom of that, that took so long. I don't even know how long, I didn't time it. And no joke, within 15 meters of uh, paved roads, I got a flat, like a full on flat tire. My, my rear tire was down to the ground. That probably was from the, um, from the off-road bit, but whatever, it was flat nevertheless. And uh, well, long story as short as possible. I fixed the flat, it took me a while because I was just struggling with getting the tire back on at the end and I was just hoping that it would hold, like the uh, the repair would hold the flat. Luckily it did. And um, at this point I'm looking at how long it'll take me to get to uh, Solmona where the bus is. And uh, I'm, I will just make it to like the minute. And. By the way, at that point I realised I still had my map set on gravel bike, which is why it took me down that off-road path, which is so annoying. So I switched it to road, 
and it changed like oh three hours to the destination to like an hour 50 so I was like oh that's good um, so then I'm riding I'm riding I'm riding I'm pedaling non-stop I make the fastest time ever I think I did 20k the first 20ks in 45 minutes which was just insane for me and then I look at the the map and it's just an incline from there to Somona and I have to keep pace to make it on time and I'm going downhill or, or flat so um, sorry if I'm not making much sense by the way I'm just I just got to the bus stop um, so I'm thinking all right I'm just gonna have to camp here and then make my way to Napoli tomorrow and then um, I start walking along the side of the road when it starts to get really steep put my hand out to see if I can hitchhike and then there was a bus a bus picked me up and took me to Solmona so I'm here now with 20 minutes to spare before the bus leaves and I, when I got to the last city I was looking to see if there were any buses or trains that would get me to Solmona none came up but I was just so lucky I was in the right place at the right time and yeah here I am um, to Napoli all right so I made it to Napoli um, got the bus and then from the bus uh, I just bus stop I just rode about a kilometer to where I'm staying now um, and I thought just before I check in I'd make this video otherwise I'll have no energy um, yeah just a really quick summary I absolutely loved the last few days um, I initially I was a bit bit upset that I couldn't do the full track the full like seven or eight days but I'm really glad that I just sort of dipped my toes in the water and did two nights um, and there's so many things that I learned that I can improve upon next time for when I want to do a longer trip like a longer bike packing camping trip and um, yeah like looking back now um, it was the perfect two or three days I think um, in the moment there were about one or two times when things could have like very easily gone pear-shaped uh, but we got very lucky for example that camping spot we found um, when it was like 15 minutes till sunset I was so lucky um, but yeah I think one the only negative I could really think of and it's nothing that I could help was I've kind of packed for two separate trips I've got half, half my luggage is the tent and the mat and the sleeping bag and all that and then my other half is just a bunch of clothes for the two months I'm staying here so you know if I was to do just a camping trip then that would eliminate half my luggage if I was to do just two months in Italy with no camping that would also eliminate half my luggage so um, that's the only negative I could really think of um, and those two German guys uh, that was super helpful I think uh, it was really comforting knowing that we were kind of on the same page when we were riding you know I, I expected like they were so experienced I expected them to just be like yeah we're gonna get 120 k's today and just powering through and like I'd be the one going hang on let's have a break but they were breaking just as I was thinking oh let's have a break and um, and uh, times when in my head I was thinking oh more uphill and, you know oh, I can't wait till there's more paved road I didn't want to say it out loud in case they kind of thought like oh just get over it but they were also like expressing you like oh I can't wait till some downhill and I can't wait till the roads are more paved so um, it, yeah even though they were like way more experienced with this I, I felt like we were all on the same page with what we wanted in the uh, in the journey so that was good it was good knowing it wasn't just me thinking thinking those things um, yeah that's all I can really think of saying right now um, but yeah overall as, uh, as an experience yeah 10 out of 10 definitely recommend